All right, so let's look at some of the, the situation where uh, the implementation of the PKI. Um, so this is the PKI uh, working process. Okay, so um, uh, so first of all, we have uh, two components here. Uh, uh, for example, these are the two firewall, and then we have the uh, PKI authentication center. All right, so the, here we have the CA certificate authority and also uh, and also the database okay now this thing can be two different components or it could be uh, within the same components CA with the database as well um, okay so uh, in uh, on the PKI network a PKI entity applies for a local certificate from the CA and the applicant device uh, applicant device authenticate the certificate okay so this is how it works so first of all, let's say we have two firewall. We we want we want the two firewall to also use the certificate. So first of all, they will request CA certificate. Now this request is basically <coughs> just to um, to download the CA cert. All right, I, I want to know who you are first. Okay, so you can see that the the first process. Look at the arrow here. All right, so both of them they actually uh, request for a certificate, and after that in return. The uh, the CA actually sends the his his own cert to both sides, okay, and after that they will send uh, they will install the CA uh, certificate, okay. Now it, sometimes, like I said, it could be enterprise CA, it could be a, a public CA. Enterprise CA means uh, in in that organization uh, they have their own, uh, for example, like we call it the root CA. So you need to 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 perform this process to install the CA certificate. And after that, send the public key uh, and also the entity information to apply for the certificate. So step number four basically means you, first of all you have to reach, uh, you have to create, you have to generate uh, a pair of the key. Uh, remember we mentioned about the public and the private key. So, but as an individual, you only need to send the public key and together with your information about what is the host name. Uh, how many years you want to apply for the cert? What is your organization uh, name and uh, which department and etc. etc. Okay, and uh, assume that the uh, CA approve and the CA will then issue the local certificate with the signature of the CA. Okay, and after that you will uh, uh, install the local uh, certificate and this guy also install the lo local certificate, and after that these two guys can share each to each other. Okay, the local certificate. Right. So why do they they, they need to share to each other? Because uh, in the in the certificate, it actually includes everything which is very detailed. Uh, it has the fingerprint. It has the dish, uh, signature of the CA. It has the uh, information about uh, uh, the the public key uh, of the. For example, I'm if I'm, I'm talking about A from a B point of view, I'm actually getting the public key of uh, uh, firewall A. And then from the firewall A point of view, I also get the public key of uh, from from B. Okay, so once we have the uh, both um, uh, local certificate, then they will verify the pure local certificate. So how to verify? Very simple. We have a CA. Remember? <laughs> yeah. So so in this case, yeah, I can verify through CA to 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 sure to make sure that. I'm actually getting the cert which uh, I'm intended to, and after that they can use the the, the cert and to encrypt all their traffic, and uh, the other party would, would would be able to decrypt and encrypt and decrypt on the other side. Okay, so this is the whole working process. So let's talk about some of the practical use case. Uh, so the first one is to log in to the web page using HTTPS. Okay. Uh, so this is example of a firewall, okay? A firewall where uh, the administrator wanted to uh, log in um, using the HTTPS client software. Um, so like some of the uh, uh, software um, uh, firewall administration software will will, will require the, uh, uh, the 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 cert, yeah. So that uh, once you have the cert, you can actually uh, have a secure channel uh, to the firewall and to perform uh, whatever uh, necessary uh, administration job uh, on the firewall. Okay, across across a, a non-secure web uh, internet. Okay, 
Um, so the, the obtaining certificate process is actually done right here. Okay. So, <coughs> so this is uh, one of the use case. Uh, the second use case is actually the IPsec VPN. Okay. Uh, this is the one that we just spoke about. All right. So how do we uh, do? How do we apply for both a firewall and uh, to perform what we call the site-to-site -site VPN? All right. So this process I've already explained very detailed in the, the last two slides and uh, SSL VPN. All right. Now SSL VPN are primarily used for we call it um, um, client to site VPN or maybe uh, we call it the uh, road warrior. So road warrior basically means the employee is on a business trip he is actually out of office and this employee wanted to create a secure channel back to the office and try to access the uh, the server within the office right so um, so in this case um, we, ha we, ha we need to verify two parties okay so for example uh, as the employee right so wh when I connect to this uh, firewall right so I, I, I will I will actually uh, download your cert okay cert number two and I need to verify is this really my company and as a firewall point of view you know uh, before uh, before you log in to me I need to verify whether you are the, the actual employees right so the cert actually tells everything about this employee so if this is legit leg legitimate then therefore the firewall will allow the uh, client to pass through okay this is another use case okay right so we come to a, a quiz question all right, so first question is which of the following is not the certificate format supported by USG 6000 series firewall? Okay, now I think the answer is very obvious. <laughs> All right, is D. Okay, now look carefully. The question is asking for not, not, yeah? Uh, so text file is is not, but we mentioned about plain text, but the format of the plain text is, you know, is based on uh, uh, the certificate format, but we can actually read using Notepad, but but this is not TXT file extension. All right. So the second question is that what does a PKI system consist of? Okay. Now guys, uh, this is actually a very um, tricky question um, so the, the right answer is actually this one um, certificate and the CRL database certificate revoke list okay yeah so there's only one answer here okay so summary uh, so we spoke about the uh, PKI system structure lifecycle uh, we also spoke about the um, the PKI implementation, how does it work, and uh, the process of uh, all this stuff, um, the uh, certificate format, and also the, uh, the the details about the format. Now, remember, I mentioned you can actually check out this. Uh, you, you can just use any browser to go to any of the secure website and just click on the certificate and look at the contents. And uh, also, we spoke about the. Uh, a common application scenario like I, uh, IP, uh, sorry, uh, VPN, or uh, maybe the SSL VPN, uh, maybe uh, somebody want to connect to the web server and things like that. Secure web. All right. So thank you for listening for. This.